So hello, welcome to the video and welcome to cabin 1519 of the Carnival Radiance. You may hear 1519 and think I am luxuriating in the heady heights of deck 15, but no, this is on deck 1, the lowest passenger cabin. It's an inside cabin and, you know what, it's been alright. Now the Carnival Radiance is an interesting ship. It was the first cruise ship I ever sailed on back in 2009 when it was called the Carnival Victory. During the You Know What it was refurbished and part of that refurbishment they changed their name so although they would like you to think this is a new ship from about 2021 it was actually built in had to add that because I don't have the internet today to be able to google it as I record this video. And I do vaguely remember aspects of this ship, particularly the colour scheme, although there are quite a lot of changes to it. I will make a video where I review this cruise and I will talk about some of those changes in that video. But in this video I'm going to show you my cabin. I'm going to give you a full cabin tour. It shouldn't take long because it's quite small, but it's been quite a pleasant place to spend the three nights I've had aboard. So if that sounds good, stick around. Hi, I'm Matt and I love cruising. I love the ships, the places you visit, the entertainment, and every now and again I'll also enjoy a drink. So subscribe to see where I go next and perhaps get some inspiration for your next cruise. So let's start with the location of the cabin. You'd think after two nights I would have remembered my cabin number, but now I realise I hadn't. I was actually in cabin 1419 on deck one. Hey, it was a boozy cruise. I was right at the stern of the ship, but it wasn't too far from the rear elevators. A retro looking corridor, I'm getting vibes of Las Vegas in the 80s. And here we are, cell number 1419. So you come in through the door, over here are some light switches and a control switch that was provided so you don't actually have to remember to put your own card in. A fair amount of cabinet space. This one houses a safe. Unusual design because you lock it by swiping a credit card and then unlock it by hopefully swiping the same credit card rather than putting numbers in. Haven't seen one like that for a very long time. And again, that's perhaps a clue as to the actual true age of this ship. Down below are the life jackets, and that's some spare bedding up there, but that's a little bit of space for you to use as well. Next you move along and you have a wardrobe with a decent amount of hanging space, quite a long drop as well, so if you have some lengthy dresses or whatever, there's plenty of space to hang them in there. Then there's a third wardrobe which has some extra hanging space, a little bit shorter this time, and a mini bar, which I've not actually even opened yet. And I'm not shocked to find that it is empty, and neither am I shocked to find that it's not particularly cold. Moving along, you have a desk area, a small footstool bin underneath, some drawers, so again, storage is really not too bad in here, plus another cabinet over here, which again, I've not opened. But again, if you brought some shallow stuff you want to tuck away, it will fit in there quite nicely. Plus a couple of shelves up there. Spinning around, you've got the TV. I'll come back to that in a second. And of course, the bed. Two single beds shoved together. Quite sizable, but you can even see the gap it's quite pronounced there is quite a groove that forms down the bed and if you're tall and you have to sleep across the angle you do find yourself falling down it a little bit it's not been too bad but it is not perhaps the best cruise bed I've ever had and small cabinets on both sides and I suppose I should mention the obligatory neutral art Slashes of blue giving you perhaps the impression that you're outside when quite obviously you're not. Spinning back around there's a space here I suppose some of that gets eaten up a bit if the beds are separated. You get a sense of space in this cabin which a lot of inside cabins don't perhaps give you but the downside is that there's nowhere to sit other than on the bed. Yes I suppose you could perch on the stool but that's not going to be good for your back if you've got any length of time spent in your cabin but uh, you know what I've had worse. Oh and towel animals are a thing here. I had a walrus yesterday. That's a heart or two swans that have been decapitated and a little thank you notice this is the last day of a very short cruise. 
And an air conditioning system here it looks a little newer, but it may actually still date from when the ship was originally built. And through here, you have the bathroom. And what a delightful colour the bathroom is too. Operating theatre vibes I'm getting from this, and that obviously was a very fashionable colour back in when this ship was built. But it is quite spacious actually, there's a bit of room to move in here. And the shower features the dreaded curtain rather than a door. Wasn't a problem for me, but I guess some people dislike them so much that they would hate to shower in a facility like this. Good water pressure, but I guess on deck one you'd expect that. Some potions if you didn't bring your own. And you know what? It's not a bad sized shower. And then over here you have an abundance of spare toilet rolls and you have an abundance of spare boxes of tissues. And you know what? That's about it. Some shelving to put your bits and pieces. And uh, this was an odd thing as well. This is the, shower, the um, shaver charging point, which is all the way up here. It's probably a good reason why it needs to be up there, but I don't know what that reason is. So the TV has a few channels. It's really slow to fire up, but when it is fired up, you have um, a handful of channels. The only news channel is a CBS News, which seems to be more documentary based rather than breaking news from behind the desk. Turn that down a little bit. Um, and some children's channels, uh, no sports channels, which is interesting. I don't think I've been on a cruise ship before that didn't have three or four sports channels on loop. Also some on-demand movies, all of which I believe are free. Let's test one. No, $7.99 for that one. The one I'd looked at uh, earlier was showing for free. Um, not sure why I picked one that was free, but there you go. And the ship cams, plural, is quite interesting. Um, you get one of the Lido deck, which is pointing back at the swimming pool, which I suppose gives you a glimpse of the sky, but isn't quite as helpful as a forward-facing uh, video uh, camera would be. Now I've lost it. Let's go back to the ship's cams. And there's a bridge cam which I suppose does show you what's going on forwards. Not wildly exciting. So let the TV, it's what you need. Um, nothing particularly special about it. It does look like it is a new TV with the refit because it is a flat screen. But um, again, if you're spending much time in your cabin, you're probably not doing the cruise thing right. So there you go, cabin 1519 on the Carnival Radiance. It does what you need it to do and doesn't do a lot more. But I suppose if you're only going to be on it for three nights, there's very little time for anything to really start to annoy you and nothing has really annoyed me. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy that. Give the video a like. Please subscribe if you're new. If you'd like to support what I'm doing more directly, there's a Patreon account, the link in the description below. And I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.